Being embarrassed, unfortunately, is part of life. What the key to life is, is not so much living a life devoid of humiliation and embarrassment. It is learning how to handle it so that it doesn't affect you socially and most importantly, it doesn't affect your self-esteem and your core of confidence. Let me tell you a story that happened to me yesterday. You know, the Golden Globe nominations came out. Like, I was talking about this at work. I am a journalist, for God's sakes. And I was like, yeah, like, I haven't even heard of some of those movies. Like, Selma? What is that movie even about? My bosses were like, the race riots in Selma? Martin Luther King? And I'm like... Okay. I mean, I can't know everything, you guys. Like, do you know that an elephant's pregnant for two years? No, you don't. So, sorry, I can't know everything. Whatever, I'm gonna, I have to go get a notepad. I'll be right back. And I ran to the bathroom, and I almost fucking cried because I was so embarrassed. I was so embarrassed. I was like, what is, why did I say that? Why? If I don't get a raise, it's because of this. I felt like such an idiot. But I, the key there is I did it in I freaked out in private. The other key is I brushed it off. Let me break this down for you. When you do something embarrassing, and when you say like, oh my God, you guys, I'm so embarrassed. Did you see what happened? And you give that reaction publicly. What you're essentially doing is saying, I'm so sorry, society. Look at what a fool I am. Please forgive me, society, for being such an idiot. This is a very dangerous social position to put yourself in. Because if you start apologizing for your behavior or your slip up or that time you fell or the time you got too drunk at a party, you are then giving whoever it is you're not like saying I'm embarrassed to the power to forgive you and then the power to decide if you're going to move on or if you're not. Some people are like, oh, always apologize when you've done something wrong. No, I don't. That's that's not me. I was. Even as a kid, my mom's like, you need to go apologize. And I was like, no, I'm not sorry. I'm not going to say it because I don't want to sit and look at that person and think, oh, they get to decide if I get forgiven. I, mm -mm, it's just not me. But that has served me well in terms of being unembarrassable. Because if I do something stupid, if I get too drunk in front of the guy I like and like, I don't know, casually vomit all over myself, if I go around me like, oh my God, you guys remember, this is so horrible then I'm just, I'm keeping the rumor alive. I'm keeping the scandal alive. I'm feeding it with my own drama and emotion. She is certainly not a person to be admired, but Paris Hilton is amazing in the sense that she is unembarrassable. She should clearly be humiliated, like, constantly, but she's not, and she never has been. Like, she's a few years older than me, and I remember when I was younger, like, watching her kind of in awe, because I'm like, Jesus, God, like, no matter what she said or wore or did or forgot underwear or made a sex tape, she was just like, yeah, and? And it like diffused the drama and the scandal because she's just like, whatever. But then you see other celebrities who it's like they can't let something go. They're like, no, it didn't happen. Shut up, you guys, shut up. And it's like, dude, like if you stop talking about it, everyone else would stop talking about it. So that's something to take into your life. A lot of you guys email me and you're like, I got too drunk at a party around my crush which obviously, yes, of course I've done. Everybody has done that. It's natural to feel like that's what everyone now associates you with, but I'm going to tell you the phrase that my mother and my grandmother have told me for years is, you wouldn't care so much what people thought about you if you knew how seldom they did. And it's true. We assume that everyone else sits around obsessing about the things that we're doing. No, the only person obsessing about our lives is ourselves. Like, no one you know remembers what you wore last Thursday. But you know, you don't want to wear it again, because what if anyone remembers? Who the hell is going to remember? Nobody is going to remember. Just like nobody cares what you did. People care about themselves. So if you keep bringing up an embarrassing incident, if you keep cringing about it and giving, like, an apologetic vibe out, it's going to keep it in the foreground of people's mind. So you have to pretend like you don't care. Do what I did, go in the bathroom, cringe and freak out, write down your feelings, burn the piece of paper that you write them down on. For some reason, like, burning paper is, like, extremely therapeutic. Just don't burn down your house, because then it's not therapeutic at all. But don't have that reaction in public, because it's just going to feed the fire. 
And the, the quicker you move on from something, when you pull a Paris Hilton, everyone else is going to move on from it too. And if you embarrass yourself around your crush, remember this. If you like a guy and he did something stupid or said something stupid, say even like four different times, you probably would still like him. Because that's how liking someone works. You give them the benefit of the doubt. It even has a psychological name. It's called the halo effect. You tend to attribute positive attributes to someone you like. Even if everything that they're doing flies in the face of that assessment. You're like, well, he, he's kind of an idiot and he can't ride a skateboard, but I think he's really coordinated and athletic because I like him. So the same is true. If a guy likes you, it doesn't matter if you said one stupid thing. It doesn't matter if you got drunk once. It doesn't matter. Like he's going to give you the benefit of the, of the doubt. And if he doesn't, he's not into you or he's not worth your time, ladies.